Hey, hey, poker peeps. Thank you very much for tuning in to a little training video. So my name is Sky with Smart Poker Study. Now, aggression wins in poker. This means that bets and raises are much preferred, much better money makers than checking and calling. And the reason why is because when you're betting and raising, you have fold equity. Your opponent can just fold the pot or fold their hand and award you the pot right then. You don't have to hold a flush or straight. You don't have to river your full house. Not at all. When you bet and they fold, good result right there. So let me give you a quick example of, of uh, uh, aggression versus passivity and what my own win rates are with them. So first off, let's take a look at when I'm the preflop raiser, making a two bet preflop. Now I'm positive 96 big blinds per 100 hands. That means every time I make this play, on average, I'm winning 0.96 big blinds for every two bet I make. But what happens when I'm the two bet caller preflop? We're down negative 7.86 big blinds per 100 hands. So every time I call, I'm losing chips. Every time I raise, I'm making money. Yeah, there you go. Aggression wins in poker. Let's take a look at one other one. What about if I am the aggressive C better? So I'm making that flop C bet. I showed aggression pre-flop. I raised, they called C bet the flop, positive 304. That's really good, right? Every time I C bet, on average, I'm making three big blinds each time. What about when I am the caller of the C bet? Now it's important to remember that when you're calling a C bet, that means you also called pre-flop. So you didn't even have a chance to win it pre-flop, right? You just passively put money in, hoping to hit something on the flop. So when I call those C bets on the flop, positive 249. So still positive, that's a good thing, but just not as good as being the pre-flop, or I'm sorry, uh, the flop C bet aggressor, right? So what I wanna do in this video is show you one of the things that I do when I'm reviewing hand histories, uh, or two things. The first is that I always center my hand history reviews around one specific topic. So I don't look at three betting, I don't, I don't look at a hand where I three bet, a hand where I called a three bet, a hand where I C bet, where I called a river bet. All of these hands that I look at in this one session are all about calling a C bet right here. And I'm looking at losing hands as well. So on the button, I lost with this ace queen. This is the biggest losing hand back from December of 2017, a long time ago right here. Let's review it. So like I was saying, the first thing I do is when, when I look at a hand, um, you know, I'm, I'm, when I'm doing hand history reviews, I'm grouping them all. So I'm looking at all one big situation. The other thing I do is I record mistakes in my poker journal. So whatever mistakes I encounter here, when I write them down, that allows me to, to go back, maybe use them as a warm up, prepare myself for my next session, see what mistakes I've been making and then work to not repeat those mistakes. So that's what we'll do today. Face a raise. And then we just call, oh man. Like, okay, the orange color means he's a loose aggressive player. 35, 16, three bet at 6%, pretty loose aggressive player. This is a perfect spot. I'm in the best position too, right? I should be three betting here. If he calls, I'm now in a bread and butter spot because I'm in position on the flop against one extra player or one player as the pre-flop raiser. This is a, it's not a bad call because I'm way ahead of all of his aces in his range, except for ace king. I'm ahead of all the broadways, all the suited connectors, suited gappers in his range. The only thing I'm a dog to is ace king and pocket pairs. So it's not a bad call, but just for, for gameplay, for being aggressive, for playing winning poker, I much prefer a three bet right here. Don't like the fact that I called this. So failed to three bet versus lag with ace queen off on the button too that's terrible best possible position perfect spot to three bet bluff fold and then a call okay three way to the flop but to the flop he c bet 7.92 roughly 80 maybe 75 percent pot right there we decide to call and then he calls as well okay well we do have that top pair top kicker i don't fault to call it's not like a raise is necessary it's not the wettest of boards it's not like i'm charging draws or it's not like i need to charge draws by raising there i'm fine with that call 17 so he decreased it to half pot on a blank card looking like and we just call this is fine i'm kind of pot controlling no need to raise just yet uh my guess is villain over here will fold because we called and he double barreled in a multi-way pot now the four comes oh he ups it back again 
I think this is probably a fold most players, most players, and look, he hasn't shown a propensity to barrel. He bets rivers 0% of the time, 0 out of 4. Double barrels, 0 out of 1. But he seems like he's probably the kind of player that only commits money on the turn in river, especially for three streets with a really good hand. And everything that he's betting here, he's not doing this with king-queen. King-queen is checking at some point to try to keep the pot smaller, checking here, and then maybe just calling a river bluff by me, or checking and hoping we get to showdown. I think everything that he bets here, I don't think there's anything called on the river when I'm only beating bluffs. So I really think I'm only, I don't think he's betting king queen here, not for this additional increase in sizing, right? Why not just make it half pot 63 or 64 big blinds with a hand like king queen when he's not too sure of the value. I think he knows he's going for value. He's betting bigger to get good value out of me. And so what do I do? I just call, Urgh. don't like it. Call on the river when I'm only beating bluffs. Threes and he, turned his set of threes. So he decreased it to get value out of us on a non-scary card, uh, or uh, good for him, but not scary for us. He wanted us to call, and then he went for max value on that river. Hate that call, no good. Let's take a look in the cutoff now, review a hand, pocket jacks. Tell me a three bet. <laughs> ah. Okay, now, Okay, it's four big blinds, it's larger than usual, and he's an unknown. So I guess that's why I call just to keep the pot small, assess on the flop what happens, I'm in position and everything. I don't think a call is bad here, but I much prefer a three bet. And the way I play nowadays, failed to three bet versus unknown with Jack-Jack in the cutoff. So once again, if I had three bet here and he just called, uh, I'm in a bread and butter spot, which is really good for me. That's the most profitable spot to be in. Hate calling because I'm just asking these players to come over the top with a three bet or potentially just call. And I would rather be heads up with pocket jacks than multi-way with jacks, even though I do have position. Oh, flop in the second pair. Okay, check seven. So roughly, the I guess the same as a four, 75% pot, give or take. Maybe a little bit, maybe a little bit less, maybe 67% pot. Uh, what's the calculator say? Seven divided by 12, five. Oh, 56% pot, okay. So on the smaller side here. Uh, so we make the call, hoping he has ace, king, ace, jack, pocket tens, pocket nines as well, just C betting, okay. Uh, so the three, oh, another three, a turn three. Wait, so he went from 56% to now roughly 80% and I have second pair? Oh my God, hate the call, hate the call. Calling with second pair when they upped sizing from 56% to 80%. What is happening? It might be just under 80. It might be like, I don't know, 78% pot. That's terrible. Just second pair versus an unknown, right? Most players, when they're double barreling, I'm a, they're unknown to me. That means I'm unknown to them. They're probably just going for value. It could be a couple of hearts, and we do have a heart blocker. But basically, that's all I'm doing. I'm hoping he's bluffing right here with this call. I hate the call. <laughs> oh, my God. And then I call. What am I doing? What am I doing? Call river over shove with second pair versus unknown triple barrel. Oh, my God. I hate this call. Absolutely. And the way he played it makes sense from, you know, pre-flop four big blinds, charging everyone else who comes in with weaker hands. He flops that top set. He bets smaller to get us to commit. And we committed chips. Turn, he raised it to get more chips out of us because we called the flop. He's getting more chips. We done screwed up with that one, man. Oh, geez. In the MP, we only have 10 hands to go through. Pocket fives, ace, king. Oh, let's look at this ace, queen hand. We screwed up royally with ace, queen, but this one we won. Let's see how we did here three big blinds five big blind raise so a min raise from a loose aggressive player hmm. i'm fine with calling players like this they min raise with small to medium pocket pairs suited connectors and suited aces which i'm ahead of a lot of that stuff we are seeing a flop out of position but it's only two big blinds and i do have an under repped hand he won't really think that we have an ace queen here so i don't hate the call but i'm fine with it uh 
Oh, what a lovely flop. Hard to hit board, really good time to get aggressive with either a donk bet right here or maybe a check raise because we also have two over cards and we flop the nut flush draw. Man, less than half pop. This is a great time to make a check raise to 12 to 15. Let's say let's say 3x. 16.2 big blinds right here. I would really love that as a check raise. Oh, see, this is passive play. I'm calling just in hopes. Calling in hopes to hit a draw instead of making a check raise that's likely to win on a hard to hit board. Yeah, at this point, like you can just guess. And by calling, if another heart comes, it's a scary board. It's paired with three hearts and I have the nut flush draw. I'm blocking the third nut flush. It's not like he could have queen 10 of hearts here either. The best heart draw he can have is a king X of something, which is the second nuts. If a, if, if a four of hearts comes, I hit a flush. It's a scary card. I would much rather check raise here, have plenty of fold equity and get extra value in case that heart comes, which could scare him off later. <laughs> Eight of hearts hits. We hit our flush. Now we lead out for just a half pot and then he folds. We miss out on value. Um, I would have much preferred that flop check raise. So as you can see, now that I have my list of mistakes made over here, what I do is I utilize this in my next play session as my warm up. So I'll take a look at these and I'll keep these mistakes made in mind with the goal of not repeating these mistakes, or with the goal, goal of doing better things in the future, of three betting when the three betting is a good opportunity uh, to three bet, like with these with this ace queen would have been a good opportunity to four bet actually um uh, listening to what they're doing and then calling or folding when i should be folding which is a second pair hand right i made so many mistakes but i can utilize these mistakes as a good way to improve my skills by focusing on them on the next or the next time i'm on the felt all right, thank you so much for watching the video. Please like the video and subscribe to this channel if you found any value at all in today's video. I'll catch you on the felt.